Hello, my name is Ahmad Haddad and today we will be discussing the history of anatomy, the specialized branches of anatomy and what are the other aspects of anatomy. This is the lecture outline. We will be going through history of anatomy, gross, microscopic and developmental anatomy, specialized branches of anatomy. So what does anatomy mean? Anatomy is a Greek word which means to cut open. It is the study of structure of a body either regionally or systematically. What do we mean when we say studying regionally? For example, if we are studying only the upper limb or which is called the part of the limb, if we are studying the musculature, the neurovascular structures and all the bones which are in the upper limb, this is studying of anatomy regionally. They are interplay with each other. But if we are studying the musculature of the whole of the body, that's just the muscles of the whole of the body, then this is studying the anatomy systematically. So when we date the records back, actually the first of the, it was early Egyptians who perfected the science of mummification, where actually they were the first ones to start cutting and opening up the body and to see what's inside. Major organs were removed and placed in jars. Body cavity was filled with a sawdust dust like material and it was wrapped in linen cloth shrouds. In the earliest records of human structure by dissection are in the, uh, on the walls of the great pyramids in Egypt where they have shown how they've dissected out the bodies. So coming as we are going through the history, it's I have already know that this Hippocrates, he was one of the great Greek physician who studied anatomy and speculated pathology. He has been known as the father of medicine. There were so many theories which have been speculated by him. But much of his work remains today in medicine. After Hippocrates, it was Plato. You must have heard about him as well. It was his idealistic outlook was reflected in his concept of a man. According to him, the organism is controlled not by a material organ, but the brain, but three types of soul or pneuma contained in three main organs of the body, the brain, the heart and the liver, the Plato's tripod. Now, it, uh, considering when we know the, what kind of anatomy is today, we know it's made of different cells and organs and different things. But at this stage, it was there was no real, dis so much dissection was carried out. And this was the Plato's tripod is that there are three souls in the uh, body. One soul resides in the brain, other in the heart and, and then other lies in the liver. Now Aristotle, he came after Plato and he made careful investigations over all kinds of animals including humans and pursued limited type of scientific method in obtaining data. He wrote the first account of embryology which is the developing human in which he described the development of a chick embryo but note that that it was on a chick embryo not on a human embryo his best known zoological works in the history of animals and parts of the animals and generation of animals is still available in some of the archives of libraries despite his tremendous accomplishments Aristotle perpetuated some erroneous theory regarding human anatomy Although he disagreed with Plato regarding this theory of pneumas, the three pneumas, the seeds of souls, but he described the brain as a seat of feeling and thought and proclaimed the heart to be the seat of intelligence. Aristotle thought that the function of the brain which was bathed in a fluid was to cool the blood and that pump from the heart and thus maintained by body temperature. Now when we are studying anatomy, we know that the brain is actually bathing in a CSF, which is called a cerebrospinal fluid. Yes, he was right to an extent that it is bath in a fluid, but the main function was not the temperature control, but it was mainly the thought process. All these activities which have been carried out of the body are actually originate from the neurons of the brain. So the birth of the modern day biology and the first man to make a significant contribution in biology is Alcamon. He lived in Cortana in the 5th century. Alcamon was the first scientist known to have practiced dissection in his researches. Alcamon reasons that since a blow to the head can affect the mind in concussion, this must be where the reason lies. Now that was his own observation. He may have 
seen this different kind of objects which have had a head injury and they may have become uh, drowsy or unconscious as a result he speculated that the reasoning and the logic and the judgment is actually lies inside the brain not in the heart disagreeing with the aristotle's theory in dissecting corpses to pursue his idea he observed passages of linking the brain with the eyes actually at that time there was very crude dissection going on he observed that there was something which was linking the orbit the eyes to the brain we now know that after as we have science has become so advanced that this was actually the optic nerve and he thought that probably there is a some link between what you see and what you hear and the brain coming to the human wave section now although there was limited dissection but people started working on this arteries and bloods and there was some kind of crude uh, in early 3rd century two surgeons in alexandria herophilus and herastratus made the first scientific study designed to discover the workings of human anatomy you know the work actually uh, in that time there was actually a belief in romans that in the afterlife you need the same body so actually dissecting out or cutting out opening a body was considered a very abhorrent crime this body was considered very sacred so they only convey this they carried out the dissections on those criminals who were actually convicted and that's how this the science progressed coming to the galen of pragma now galen was a scientist who covered up some experiments and dissected out on animals actually his main work was type the book he wrote was on the dissections of apes and pigs as i have already told you that it was his main book was on apes and pigs and there was some serious errors serious errors regarding how the human anatomy is but the galen generalized this anatomy he saw in apes and pigs and that humans would have would be the same as these apes and pigs are although we now know that there is a serious differences between the human anatomy and the anatomy of other mammals or other animals like apes or pigs his error the major error was the blood goes back and forth from the heart in an ebb and flow motion why he conducted it out because first of all he conducted dissection of dead animals in dead animals when heart is not pumping as we know now today that the heart pumps the blood into the blood vessels but as the blood vessels are empty so he thought that the blood flows in and then goes back to the heart so this was an ebb and flow theory of circulation of blood which was later on proved wrong because when later on the different side is conducted out in live animals they thought that okay now the blood vessels are actually filled with the fluid called the blood through his experiment galen is able to overturn many long held beliefs that arteries contain air carrying it all parts of the body from heart and lungs although he knew it that it was not air it was some other fluid which was contained in them not air now this is a diagram which is showing illustration from a galen stacks as you can see see still they had not perfected the science of anatomy they were still believe that okay there is a spirit residing somewhere and then there is a natural spirit and then there is a other animal spirit which lies in the brain but as this was mainly in the apes and pigs so you can very well see that anatomy is totally different from what we see in human anatomy as we will be covering in different future lectures now and this in 9 in 19th century 9th and 10th century it was the muslim era and then there were so many muslim scientists actually who were working on science as well and ibn sina or avicenna he was author of more than 100 of works the most prominent which is the for so so many works he was actually called as the canon of medicine and this book contains valuable anatomical and physiological information adapted from hippocrates aristotle and galen to which ibn sina added his own belief now if you go back in previous slides i mentioned you there was a tripod tripod was that there was three spirits in the heart brain and the liver ibn sina added to his it was called as the sina 
uh, sinus quadrangle. He said that actually the spirit lies in the heart, the brain, the liver, and the testes. Ibn Sina studied the structure of eyes also original. The canon of medicine was the best medical work produced in the feudal age and served as a source of knowledge for physicians of the East and the West until the 17th century. So you can very well imagine it was well for 700 to 800 years. This was the main textbook of medicine and anatomy. <clears throat> then came Ibn Nafis in East. Arabic physicians continued contributing to the process of medicine and one of them was Ibn al-Nafis from Damascus and discovered the pulmonary circulation. Now he was also carrying out dissection but it was not on humans, remember this was on other animals. So up till now whatever our knowledge of anatomy was, was actually either the works from the Aristotle, the Galen and Hippocrates or there were dissections which was carried on mainly on the mammals or other animals, not on humans. Now, by the time this was in year 2086, it was the first ever autopsy was performed. And we now know it's called an autopsy because in year 1286, we have a reference to a human dissection being performed to determine the cause of death. And we now know that, it, that when you do a dissection to rule out what was the cause of the death, it is called as autopsy. So it was by this time in 1286 before that, whatever the dissection was, it was on the many either on the apes, on the pigs, or it was on convicted criminals and not whole of them. Some parts were used to uh, delineate what kind of anatomy a human has. Coming to the Leonardo da Vinci, you must have heard of it. Same. He made a series of anatomical drawings. Over the next 25 years, he dissected about 30 human corpses and many of them at a mortuary in a room. Now, by this time, the human dissection has actually started on in the mortuaries. His drawings amounted to some 750, include studies of bone structures, muscles, internal organs, brain, and even the position of a fetus in the womb. A study of the heart suggests that he was on the verge of discovering the concept of circulation of blood. Okay, now the next slide would be showing some of the original diagrams of Leonardo da Vinci's book. As you can see, he was mainly studying the musculature, the bones, and uh, different way the arteries and nerves are actually organized on the body. The main dissections were actually on the dead people. There was in the corpses in, which were lying in the mortuary. Now this diagram illustrates his diagrams on womb. We, as you can see, there is a uterus and there is a baby lying inside it. Although there is a diagram which is showing the formation of placenta as well. We will be discussing in different lectures. But actually now when we know that after so much advancements, that yes, there is a placenta which is actually providing nutrition to the baby. Harvey and circulation of blood. Now there was a scientist called as William Harvey who wrote a book, although it's a French, but I'm going to just translate the English version of it, the anatomical fun function of movement of heart and blood in animals. His main work was on circulation and he shows that the blood does not drift in the body in any sort of a random ebb and flow. You remember Galen's book, he said actually the blood goes out and comes back. It flows in ebb and flow. According to this, Harvey, he said there is no such thing as ebb and flow of the blood. Rather, uh, there are two missing, actually, how he found it out, we already know that Leonardo da Vinci had provided the diagrams of a structure which is the pumping of the blood called as heart. There were diagrams present regarding of the uh, vessels and arteries and veins, but there was no miss, something was missing in between. There were two missing ingredients. His theory implies that there must be a network of tiny blood vessels bringing the blood from the arterial system to the venous system and completing the circuit. And when he's uh, other coming to the Malapigi and the microscope, the Malapigi, when he discovered a microscope, he saw the, the he observed those capillaries, those micro capillaries, which we cannot see on uh, our, from our naked eyes. So his theory actually of that okay there is a pump then there are circulating arteries and veins which further divide to very small 
capillaries and venules and then they again become veins and transfer back the blood to the heart but at that time in Harvey's theory was not considered effective because there was no real for capillaries which can be seen which were completing the circuit but when Malapigi discovered the microscope he proved that yes there are certain small arteries and venules which exist and capillaries which exist which we cannot see from the naked eyes so his theory was actually proved right that yes there is a pump which circulates the blood throughout the body rather than there is an ebb and flow of motion of the gill coming to the leven hook and the microscope he used simple microscope with a single lens in effect a tiny and extremely powerful magnifying glass he was the first scientist to give an accurate description of the red blood capsules he observed and depicts spermatozoa and semen of a dog he provided a dying room drawing of anomaly or a bacteria seen in saliva and dental plaque now you can very well see initially it was the dissection of dead animals then they realize it okay the animals may have a different anatomy and humans may have a different anatomy in the 12th 13th century there was a shift from dissecting out animals there was a shift to dissecting out dead people which was done in the mortuaries they after realizing it that okay there may be a different things then after the discovery of microscope they realized that there's a whole world of organisms which we cannot see from our naked eye which exists and then this shift from actually finding out those micro particles which cannot be vis- which are not visible from the naked eye then this quest to find out more and more about those things like rbcs wbcs small capillaries then the shift of quest shifted to that angle the first to he provide a diagram of anomaly or a bacteria seen in saliva or dental plaque the first to wander with such a large vision among the minute of the animal kingdom his count of a common flea follows his development from the egg to the practical perfection of its adult anatomy his researches demonstrated for the first time that the tiniest living things have a life cycle a generative system like any other creature coming to the andrus vesalis now he is <coughs> called as the father of modern anatomy the why the man who revolutionized the study of anatomy was andrus vesalis he realized that to learn anatomy students need to be involved with dissection he also realized that gallen's text was severely flawed and must be replaced vesalis revolutionized the study of anatomy by doing away with the barbers in time doing human dissection himself and having students assist instead of just observe now previously it was just barbers who was doing the dissection just cutting it open and then after that uh, there would other scientists who just observe what they have seen but he andreas andreas vesalis was the first one to introduce this concept of doing the dissection by himself and this is actually the basis of modern anatomy in today when the medical schools you see the students for the first year they are actually made to do that dissection because to understand the anatomy they have to first dissect it and see what is actually there and he also published an you know, anatomy textbook which contained many anatomical accurate drawings based on human dissections so coming to the what is atom this is the we all know this we have studied so many times that most basic that anything can be broken down to and still exhibit the characteristic of itself is an atom and we are actually made up of a lot of atoms we know with a lot of content of hydrogen oxygen carbon nitrogen there is so much content in our body and they are making different atoms when they combine they form molecules in the diagram you can see a periodic table which is actually showing the different types of atoms and its elements which exist in our universe when atoms combine they form a molecule the molecules could be the examples of molecule could be proteins carbohydrates lipids and others when these molecules assemble in in their form you know the larger tissue this is called as cell no cell contains the cytoplasm the cytoplasm and there actually different molecules are suspended into a liquid is called a cell examples of cell are rbcs wbcs are a single cardiac muscle cell 
when different cells unite and they form a tissue and when they work different cells work together for example cardiac uh, cells unite to form a cardiac muscle elastic tissue surrounding the veins and artery they form the connective tissue of the body now different cells are actually forming the blood for example rbc's wbc platelets collection of tissues that work together they form an organ system for example an organ a heart a blood a vein and capillary as i've already told you when you're joining heart is formed from different muscles which is cardiac muscles then there is an elastic tissue involved in which is called as connective tissue and this arteries and veins they all together form heart then there's a blood blood contains other tissues like rbc's wbc's and different other cells as well they combine to form and they are suspended in a arteries they form a blood or a circulatory system now this is also a diagram showing an organ system on the right you can appreciate this is the circulatory system of the body which contains a pump which is called as heart that there are aorta which is taking blood away from the heart to and supplying it to the whole of the body it is giving out branches first initiating the thoracic region then the lumbar region and then it becomes continuous as the femoral and iliac vessels and then it goes on and on and on to supply even the that cell which is lying on the tip of the toe of the human and from there onwards the once the nourishment has reached the excretory products they gather back from those capillaries they reach the venules from venules they reach the veins and from those veins they gradually come up to reach the great vena cava inferior and superior and then they are actually thrown back into the heart so this is a circulatory system of the body so what we have covered up till now is actually the history of anatomy and if i summarize it started with dissecting out pigs and apes then people realizing it the humans are different then it transcended into dissecting all the dead humans and then when after the invention of microscope it was realized that there is a world which we cannot see from the naked eye the main focus and shift was to discover those things which we cannot see from our naked eyes so what we will be covering now would be the cross microscopic and developmental anatomy specialized branches of anatomy <clears throat> now anatomy has actually been it's such a broad subject now it has contains multiple branches now there is a grass anatomy there is a surface anatomy the pental anatomy microscopic anatomy or histology radiological anatomy and comparative anatomy gross anatomy is actually divided up into regional or systematic anatomy gross anatomy why we are dividing into regional or systematic is actually the way you want to study anatomy for example considering this is an upper limb if you want to just study the upper limb this would be a regional approach to anatomy and you are studying first the bones of the upper limb how they are actually joining each other and what are the joints of the upper limb and then when you join then what are the muscles overlying these bones how these muscles are being supplied by which arteries and what are the veins which are taking blood back to the from this upper limb studying of all this is a regional way of studying anatomy and this is called as regional anatomy but if i just take out one thing for example i'm just studying circulatory system and that circulatory system starts with the heart and is how this circulatory system is actually supplying blood to the whole of the body and this is studying anatomy and vessels and everything but still approach it becomes systematic that you are studying a part of anatomy but you are studying the way it is present in the whole of the body so as i've already mentioned grass anatomy is the study of structures that can be examined without the use of a microscope so it is called as macroscopic anatomy it is based upon observation through dissections on cadaver so we can call it cadaveric anatomy this is how it has been divided into systemic and gross i have already mentioned it so what is a systemic the study of specific systems of the body there are there are three main groups system present in the body somatic or voluntary systems visceral or involuntary system operative or regulatory systems 
I've just given you an example of a circulatory system. It falls in the visceral and involuntary system. We do not control our heart that okay, our heart has to beat and pump blood. So then, then the blood once returns it, we have to again go and hard, uh, make our heart do the pumping. So it's doing in, it's working without even our of conscious. We are not aware of it, but it's still pumping blood. Coming to the somatic or voluntary systems. These are systems in our body which we can or which are under our control of our will. For example, if I had to pick up a pen from somewhere, I am sitting here like this, but my arm would go and pick up a pen and then come back. Now this is voluntary movement. I can control it. If pen is lying on this side, my arm will go towards this side. Now this, these are, there are certain systems in our body which have our control of our will. But then those which are involuntary, they are not under control. Okay, I have already told you the studying one region is called as regional anatomy. It is also called as topographical anatomy because the detailed account of superficial features of a track or a country, a description of a place is called as a topography. So we are studying just upper limb, then it is a regional anatomy. As I have already told you that the upper and lower limbs form one region, and thorax is another, abdomen and pelvis is considered as one region and head and neck including the brain is termed as uh, is studies as one region now coming to the radiological anatomy this is the study of the structure of human body that includes the use of several imaging techniques such as radiography ultrasound echocardiography computer tomography mri now this is actually relatively a very new field radiology because radiology itself is uh, this started coming up in 20th century then x-rays was invented in the middle of the 20th century so when the people started okay they knew okay that the bones which, which can be seen with x-rays then it gradually ultrasound came in in the 1970s and echo i think it just came in the 21st century so but now we can study anatomy or structure of human body without actually dissecting it these are all the tools which can help us assessing anatomy without dissecting or applying a cut on the body. So these are radio radiography, ultrasonography, echocardiography, these are helpful in delineating anatomy and structures or abnormalities in the structures without the really use of a scalpel or without opening or cutting up the body. Coming to surface anatomy, it's also a branch of anatomy. It's identification, study of a form of morphology and markings of the various structures in living person the surface of the body. It enables to visualize deeper structures by observing the surface and employing different landmarks, soft tissue and skeletal which can be easily identified. Knowledge of their interrelationship to the different landmarks helps in mapping out their location. For example, if we have to get during a surgeon, uh, during surgery, if a surgeon has to reach greater trochanteric area, I will definitely be discussing these in details next lectures. But then there are landmarks. You cannot palpate certain things, but there are certain areas of the body you can palpate. And you, a surgeon is giving incisions. There are certain landmarks. For example, five centimeter superior to the greater trop, or three or four centimeter lateral or medial to the superior pubic ramus. These are the areas which can be palpated. So when we are knowing, okay, this is going to be the structure which is going to be lying so deep th at this point. But to analyze, uh, there has to be surface marking present that helps us to delineate anatomy that which structure will be present exactly and how far from this point on the surface. So it's, it's very helpful in terms of when we are marking our incisions during surgery. Coming to the developmental anatomy or embryology, it is a study of development of human body from fertilized egg to an adult form. The study of development of human being inside the uterus is normally called embryology, but in fact, it's the study of development of from fertilized egg to the eighth week in utero. Embryo is still eighth week; it's during the phase of embryogenesis. After eighth week, it becomes a fetus. So, pathology, embryology, it's one and the same thing, but it, there is a slight amount of difference. That's why you now embryology and this developmental anatomy is in exchangeable terms. 
you can call it an embryology but to be exact embryology would be studying an embryo an embryo is from third week to eighth week only rest of the development of the uterus is a fetal development and can be named fetology in fact a sequence of studies in the changes that may take place from fertilized egg to the old age and death of human being is a developmental in that way how person once is born from a child it becomes a neonate from neonate it becomes an infant from infant to become a toddler from toddler to a, a teenager from teenager it becomes a adult and adult to an old age so this is all how the humans develop psychologically socially and biologically this is called as developmental anatomy coming to the microscopic anatomy or histology it is study of structure of organs tissues and cells under a microscope there are two main branches of microscopic anatomy depending upon the use if there is a light microscope or electron microscope is used the study of structure of a cell with the help of a microscope is given a special name called as cytology a bit of a difference is a kind of a sub branch of histology studying any structure under the microscope is histology but if you are studying specifically cells only under the microscope this is termed as cytology coming to the clinical anatomy clinical anatomy is concerned with the correlation of structure to function the emphasis that relation of structure and function to medical practice the correlation is important understanding various alterations in the occur in injury or disease it is based on the knowledge gained by studying regional and systemic anatomy cranial problem solving and interesting approach by applying anatomical knowledge to real life case histories for example if there is a patient which comes to an surgeon's clinic and says i am having a problem or a pain in abdomen in right upper abdomen so a surgeon must know what are the structures which lie in the right upper abdomen then he can delineate what could be the possible issues was it there is a problem with his liver is a liver or there is the issues with his or her gallbladder or there may be a problem with his or her small large intestines but we have to understand this clinical anatomy is actually application of regional systemic anatomy the one who has studied this anatomy how he or she applies clinically into a scenario or in a problem based scenario this is termed as clinical anatomy coming to the comparative anatomy comparative anatomy is study of anatomy of various animal groups that helps us to understand a correlated morphological difference between different animal groups and the human beings this is actually anatomy started out as a dissection of animals then once from then they moved on dissection of dead humans and they realized that there is a cross difference between the anatomy way the mammals and other animals are being mapped up and how the humans are actually are so this actually gave birth to another field of anatomy which is called as comparative anatomy comparing the different structures and similarities and the differences between the human beings anatomy and the an anatomy of the animals okay although i have reached summary but uh, in summary i'm going to just read it through that anatomy has progressed by leaps and bounds in this 19th 20th century there were a lot initially it started out by dissecting out uh, from egypt they dissected and mummified their leaders from then onward then there were dissections which were made on animals and apes and pigs then there was the work of gallen gallen's work is as tremendous in terms of it that for centuries for 4 to 6 centuries were considered one of the major textbooks and authentic textbooks of anatomy although they were grossly flawed then by trial and error different scientists came up and gave up different theories this theory initially which was present before gallen was that there are souls like three or four souls which are actually residing in different parts of the body was literally refuted by gallen then gallen's theory was refuted by ibn sina that he gave his own theory of uh, sina's quadrangle that then there are instead of three souls and there are four souls one lying in the heart brain and liver and testes but then for 6 to 7 centuries gradually when in 12th century in 13th century onward in 1286 to be exact when the dissection humans started out then the drawings of leonardo da vinci he proved it up that okay the body is there's no soul such thing theory 
but rather than their systems and their organs and their different tissues which are actually linked up in different form and they function to form a one single human being then this progressed and progressed and over years then there were discovery of microscope and once the discovery of microscope brought a new era that okay there are certain things which are not visible to the naked eye but actually they exist and there is a whole new world that which we need to discover and to understand in our human anatomy better and from then onward it progressed progressed to this state when we have so many specialized branches of anatomy we have embryology we have comparative uh, anatomy we have regional systemic and cross anatomy we have radiologic and anatomy we have histology we have cytology all these branches have actually branched out from single anatomy and how they have anat- branched out because there is so much work which been carried out by different people in different domains and gradually with expansion of technology like x rays ultrasound echocardiography ct mri we are now able to see things in much more detail in much more complex way than we used to in anatomy as well so earliest anatomy literature was found during egyptian era later on romans did research and dissection on criminals Galen work on apes remained an anatomy textbook for centuries but although it was grossly flawed but still it was a textbook for centuries the vinci contributed with his drawings discovery of microscope further helped in advancement of anatomy anatomy has established itself as a science with many branches now and it's a very fundamental science of one of the basic sciences including along with the physiology and biochemistry anatomy is one of the fundamental basic sciences of medical today so we have covered up till now history cross microscopic and development of anatomy and specialized branches of anatomy so furthermore and for more and more informative videos keep watching scadia.com thank you bye bye